So I have a really cool, what I feel like is a really catchy title, I thought at first. But then I went back and I looked at it and I said, man, that may not be as catchy as I thought. But here's my title. You ready for my title? My title is Critical Thinking. That's what we're going to talk about today. Critical thinking. How critical is it that our thinking is correct? And then I realized that critical, I never took this. Can you tell I never took critical thinking in school? (laughs) Yeah, we can tell, dude. We can tell. You're not that much of a critical thinker. But then I realized critical thinking was a class, and I'm like, nope, that's, that's not good. But I have a, I know I tend to make jokes, but I plan on being pretty, I, I want to be pretty serious today because I believe with all of my heart that God's going to set some people free today. Amen. There's going to be freedom in the house today. But how many of you would be honest with me? How many of you would say that you have a stronghold in your life? You have a temptation, you have a mindset, you have something in your life that you are just done with. I'm done fighting this. I'm done struggling with it. I'm done with it. And I don't want to forget about it. I don't want to pretend it's not there. I don't want to do any of that. I'm ready to be done with this thing for good. I'm ready for complete freedom. Would you be bold enough to raise your hand? Okay. Amen. Amen. Come on. God has promised freedom today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I want to share with you guys a revelation that God gave me years ago. And I want you guys to listen intently because this truth that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, This truth that, I call it a truth bomb. (laughs) Be serious. Come on, why can't you be serious for just a minute? This truth that the Holy Spirit revealed to me and dropped dropped into my heart and into my life, it has set me free in more areas than anything else God has ever told me. And so I can promise you, if you listen today, I can promise you, not because I'm a good preacher, not because I'm eloquent of speech, not because I'm going to say it all right or do it all right, but I can promise freedom because he said that he, he is going to set those free. Amen? So this is, this is what I want to do. God wanted me to do this. God wanted me to share a piece of my testimony this morning. And I want to share with you guys how God set me free from an addiction to pornography. And you guys have no clue no clue. You haven't been in my house. You have no clue how much this was a inner struggle for me to talk about this. But I'm so glad. I'm so thankful for the boldness of God. I'm so thankful for the spirit of God that says, "Uh uh-uh, we don't take things and we don't hide them away because that's not Alex anymore. See, there's no reason to be ashamed of where you come from or where you've been because that's not who you are anymore. And there's life and there's freedom in that. Amen. Oh, come on. Come on. So this is what I want to do. I want to share a little bit of my testimony and take you and just show me how God set me free. And we're going to have some freedom in this house this morning. So this is, let me, let me, let me do this real quick. Shane, you made me so messed I'm telling you, now I feel like I got to talk fast. You messed me up. I love you, brother. I love you so much. Oh, Lord. This is, this is one of the main reasons that I wanted to start out with a testimony because this is, This is not a Bible study to me, guys. This is not something that I read, and I'm hoping that it works, and I'm hoping that it pricks ears. You know what I mean? This is my life. I'm living proof. You know that song we sing? I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. I'm living proof. So I I know that when I share my testimony and I talk about the freedom, you can spark something in your mind and say, if God set him free, he can set me free. Come on. Come on. I got some even better news for you guys. Oh. This testimony isn't from yesterday, and this testimony isn't from last week. This testimony is from years ago. And I said that to say this. He who the sun sets free isn't free for a season, isn't free for a minute, isn't going to continue to struggle. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. I think y'all might be ready. Okay, so let me, let me go over a little bit of my testimony. Let me share this with you. And I made some notes because I want to do my best to stay on track. But <clears throat> so for years, for years, guys, and I'm not trying to glorify sin. I want you guys to hear my heart because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you guys some kind of idea of how strong this thing had a grip on me. Because there may be some people dealing with something in here and they feel like, yeah, well, you may have dealt with that, but that's not a big guy's. No matter how strong it is, it don't matter. It don't matter. Okay. But for years, guys, for years, not five, not six, not seven, guys, for the better part of over a decade, I struggled with a terrible addiction to pornography, a terrible addiction. This thing absolutely ruled my life. 
I remember when I was in, I want to say fourth or fifth grade, I went to Pensacola Christian Academy. Imagine that. God, I'm so thankful for this school, y'all. I went to a Christian school and still, man, I, I was, you know, I was subject to some things that I shouldn't have been subject to. But anyway, I remember in, in fourth or fifth grade, my very first encounter with this thing. And I remember hearing, overhearing a friend talk about something that he had seen online, which is really funny to me, guys, because when I think back to it, online back then is not online what we have now. If there's any younger folks online, use the sound like, brr, brr, you got mail. Anybody remember that? <laughs> this is some kind of different online. So anyway, but I, I heard a friend of mine, I heard him talking about something that he seen online. And when I got home that day, there was something that was on the inside of me that said, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Hey, stay away from that. Don't do that. But being a young kid and being ignorant, I, I searched out what that guy was talking about. And that was my first encounter with pornography. And since that day, from that day, guys, I'm talking 11 or 12, I think, from that day, I don't remember going more than a couple of days or a week without this thing being in my life and without this thing having a grip on me. I mean, constant. I mean, terrible. Because Satan doesn't come to just mess your life up a little bit. He comes to steal everything from you. He wants to kill you. And after he kills you, he wants to destroy the lives of those around you and kill your legacy. I'm so glad God said, uh-uh. No, sir. No, sir. So anyway... I tried everything, I tried everything that I knew in my power to break free from this thing, guys. I did everything in the natural that I knew that I could do. I told my pastor at the time, I wasn't going to this church, but I told my pastor about it at the time. I had him pray for me. I talked to family members about it. Can you imagine how embarrassing? I talked to family members about it. Every time there was an altar call, guys, and somebody was preaching on addiction, I was at the altar. I prayed, God, please take this thing away from me. Like, come on, God, I'm, I'm struggling. I, I, I did everything that I knew to do. This was before the age, this was before the days of cell phones, but in the days of computers, I took the gigantic computer that was in our house and I, and I got it out of my room. When the days of cell phones started to get introduced, I would take my cell phone and leave it out. No, I tried everything that I knew that I could do. I did my very best. I tried. And nothing could break me free from this thing. Nothing was working. At best, the only thing that all of my efforts could do is take all the, all the things, all of the, the actions. It could remove the, the actions away from it, but it couldn't fix the thing that was broken on the inside. Yeah, I couldn't access it, but there was something still that was in here that's broken. So for years, I had this secret place in my heart. For years, I had this secret addiction in my heart. And listen, guys, I, I knew better. I knew better. The, I grew up in church. For those of you who may not know me, I grew up in church. I don't remember a day where my family didn't go to church. We went to church. I actually grew up in an Assemblies of God church. I grew up in a repent or burn kind of church. I, I grew up in a you're going to hell every day kind of church. You know what I mean? So, so I, I, I knew better. I knew better. You guys can ask my mama. <laughs> don't ask my mama, by the way. But you can. <laughs> You can ask my mama, from, from the time that I was a little boy, I mean a very little boy, I had a very, very sensitive heart. I had a super sensitive heart. I remember times when I was young, and kids are mean, like kids are mean, and I evolved, I got mean as I got older, but, but before that, I remember having a, a super sensitive heart towards God. I remember there would be kids picking on other kids on the playground and, and making fun of them, and that kid would be crying, and I would start crying because I would see the pain that that kid is going through. And, and I remember having a super, super sensitive heart. And I tell you guys that for a reason. I, I, I knew better, but my attitude was not, well, you know, every guy does it. It is what it is. I'm going to heaven. It don't matter. Because I had such a sensitive heart, because God had a hold on my heart from the day that I was born, and because I had such a sensitive heart, and because I knew the word, and because I knew better, all it did was throw my life into a constant, everyday, huge bag of guilt and shame. I lived my entire life, you guys, if I could verbally somehow put it, I would. And I don't know how to, ver I had so much shame in my life. I hated who I was. You talk about looking in the mirror, because I knew better, guys. You ever had, 
Oh, I'm going to speak to some hearts. You ever had that one thing, that something nobody else knows about? And you're like, God, I hate this thing. And I couldn't find freedom. And I would look in the mirror and I would hate the guy who was staring back at me in the mirror. I would hate him. I hated him. And, I, and I, the feelings that I felt towards myself, and I would look there, and, and the thoughts that I had towards myself and who I thought I was, I said, man, you're just weak. You're gross. You're, you're a pervert. You're disgusting. Like, I just, you talk about the disgust that I had for myself. <laughs> this is how I seen myself for years, guys. For years, this thing started to become my identity. That was who I seen myself as. That was my identity. But God. But God. Had enough of that. But God. And then I had an encounter with God. Amen. Amen. I remember I remember being in my house, being all alone in my house one day. And I was done. You ever been done? You ever been done? I'm done. Like, I'm done. I am so done with this thing. And I was throwing fits. And I said, you know what? Today is the last day, God. I'm so over it. If you don't take this thing out of my life, then just take me to heaven because I'm over it. I'm done with it. I don't want to be here anymore. But it was weird. I had, this, I had this thought. I had this mercy and this grace thought in my head. God gave me enough wisdom to know that because I started going through, what, what can I do? How can I get this thing out of my life? And I started going through my list again. Well, take, take all your phones and throw them away and take the computer and do all these things and remove, remove it from out of you. And I thought, that's not freedom. That's not freedom. I could take all those things and throw it away, but if I sit in a padded room all alone and I have no access to the thing that's tempting me, but still in the bottom of my heart, I desire it, I'm not free. And I said, God, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to be surrounded by computers and cell phones and all the access to all the evil things that I could want, and that thing doesn't touch me, and I have no desire for it. It has no access to me. That's not who I am. And so I said, God, I I had it out with God, which is not smart, but he's so merciful. I said, God, I have a problem. And I heard God say, what's the problem? It, does somebody actually want to get me a real? I don't mind drinking from this. If you guys don't mind, I actually brought it just as a joke, really as a joke. But anyway, so I said, God, I have a problem. And God said, what's the problem? Thanks, Dad. I, I got it, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. That's my dad, by the way. I love my dad. Yeah, come on. Come on. Oh. You could have opened it for me, Dad. My God. So I said, I said, God, I have a problem. And God said, what's the problem? And I said, okay, God. Like, I remember this. God has made me laugh over the years. Praise God. What's the problem? What is the problem? Like, I had this conversation with God. What is the problem? God, do you see my life? Like, do you see, do you understand? You've seen my life. You've known me from the beginning. You've seen my struggles for years. God, I have a problem. And God said, you don't have a problem. And I said, Okay, so now we're just playing dumb, I guess. Like, okay, like, I'm not even going to talk to you anymore if this is how you're going to be, you know? Like, I'm, I'm not kidding, guys. I, I'm having this conversation with God, like, and I said, God, what do you mean I don't have a problem? God, I'm addicted. I'm addicted. I can't get free from this thing. And God said, you're not addicted. And I'm like, I still didn't get it, by the way. I'm like, Okay, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm done. Like, uh, I came here looking for freedom, and all you have to do is tell me these things that aren't true. <laughs> and then God says this. God says, go to your Bible and find the scripture verse that tells you that you're addicted. And I said, okay, go to my Bible and find the scripture verse that tells me that I'm addicted. God, I don't need my Bible to tell me who I am. I'm looking at my life, and I'm looking at all the things that I'm doing, and it's obvious who I am and what I got going on. And it was about that time that the Holy Spirit light bulb went off, bing, 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 and I had that truth bomb dropped into my spirit. For years and years and years and years, I had looked at the actions of my life. I had looked at my life lived. I had looked at all the things that I had been doing. And I had looked at that and said, this is my identity. This is who I am. As opposed to looking at the word and saying, this is who I am. This is my true identity. 
Y'all are going to have to do way better than that. For years, I had looked at this addiction. For years, I had looked at this thing that was, that was showing forth in my life. And I said, this is real. And I had the Bible that was screaming on the other side. And it was screaming, he who the Son has set free is free indeed. Hey, I've set you free. And I've had the Bible saying this thing. It's saying, hey, I love you. Hey, you're better than that. I've had the Bible telling me that I am a new creation. All things have passed away. I've had Romans telling me a hundred times, you're dead to sin. It has no hold on you. And I looked at that and I said, that's not true. This is true. That's not true over there. This is true. And Finally, God was able to speak some clarity to me. And God said, son, what you've done is every day for years, you have looked at your life, you have looked in the mirror, and you have said, you have spoke, come on girl, you have spoke to yourself and you have spoke over yourself, I'm addicted. And every morning when you wake up, you believe I'm addicted. You believe I'm gross. You believe I have a problem. When you look at your identity, you say, this is who I am. This is my identity. All the time, I'm sitting over here screaming something totally different. And I've said, I've set you free. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's Proverbs, guys. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I've been thinking wrong. I've thought, I'm addicted. I have this problem. And it almost seems too good to be true. And it almost seems too simple to actually be the gospel. But guys, this is the gospel right here. God said, this is who you are. When you can connect who you are with this up here, that's what you'll walk out. And that's not what I was doing. And from that moment... From that moment on, I said, oh, my gosh, I spoke out loud. I said, I'm not addicted. I'm not addicted. Guys, I I felt up until that second, I felt addicted. I felt stuck. There was no hope. There was no, (laughs) I hate things that seem like there's no way out. There's never no way out. Don't tell me there ain't no way out. But I thought all these things, and then up until that second, oh, my gosh, I don't have a problem. I'm not addicted. I'm not addicted. I'm free. I'm free. And from that moment on, my life lived was free. No, I don't think you heard me. I don't think you heard me. For years and years and years, what me and my best strength, me and my best willpower tried to walk out and failed in a second, a change of mind and a flip in my belief system set me free. In a moment, in a moment. Guys, we have sold out to a lie that when your life looks a certain way, that's how you'll know you'll be free. Hold on. Oh, I got this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. (laughs) Uh, Get out of my way. We have sold out to a lie, an absolute lie, that says when your life looks like this, then you'll know that you're free. See, when, when you stop looking at the things you shouldn't be looking at, then you'll know you're free. Then you know you're free. When you, when you stop smoking the cigarettes, that's how you'll know that God has loosed you from an addiction to nicotine. That's when you'll know, when you stop doing it. How about this one? When you wake up in the morning and the thoughts in your head are not thoughts of insecurity, that's how you'll know that God has freed you from insecurity. And it's such a lie, guys. It is the biggest lie ever. It is a lie that says, take a look at you, put all the focus on you, put all the focus on your works and what's going on in your life, and forget the truth of the word. And it's a distraction. And it's a lie that says, don't believe anything that you see in here. I got news for you guys. While, I was, while it looked from the outside looking into my life that I had a problem, that I was addicted, I had never been more free. Never been more free. Why? Why? Even though I was walking out something completely different. Why? Because that's what the word said about me. Guys, we have have to, we have to, have to reprogram our mind and get some understanding that the things that you are walking out are not the things that define you. The word is what defines you. God's love. Come on. God's love, what Jesus did, the finished work, that is the thing that defines you. I got news for you guys. If God says you're free, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you walk it out or not, you are free. You're free. It's the truth. That's so hard for us. 
Let's get real. That's so hard for us because our brain tells us the real, the, what's, what's more real. Guys, the Bible talks about the things that are unseen are way more real than the things that are seen. But somehow we can't get this thing off of our brain and our focus on. We're looking our lives played out, and it's so real. And, guys, I understand it. And I'm not up here telling you that addiction is okay. And I'm not, and nobody thinks that. I'm not up here telling you that all these things in your life are okay. What I'm telling you is you are aiming the gun at the wrong thing. We're attacking the wrong thing. We're trying to fix our actions. And God said, you can't fix your actions. you got to fix your thinking. The crazy thing is, is we don't use that theology in any other area of our life when you really think about it. If you've been at this church for more than this Sunday, <laughs> you, you know that the faith theology is the theology that we walk by. That is our theology. When it comes to, like, if you're believing God for a promotion, you believe, I have that promotion. You don't see it. But you believe that you got and believe. I know I got that promotion. I know it. We have that faith theology. When you're believing for healing, your body may hurt, but we have a faith theology. We think, my body's lying to me. My body's not telling me the truth. The word tells me I'm healed. I'm healed. And it doesn't look like it. It doesn't seem like it. But yet we know I'm healed. We just got done with 12 weeks of financial breakthrough and financial teaching. And there's been a bunch of people in here sow seeds. You're believing that your harvest is already here. You know your harvest is already here, but yet you don't see it. But yet sometimes your bank account doesn't look like it. But does that matter? No. We walk out a faith theology in every area of our life, except when it comes to our actions and some breakthrough in our personal lives. Then we want to walk out a completely different theology. Then we want to walk out, well, when I see it, I'll believe. Oh, come on. That's when we want to walk out. Well, when I see it, that's when I'll believe it. <laughs> What's the nicest word I can say? That's baloney. <laughs> that's trash. Our whole Christian life is faith believing whether we see it or not. The just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we are saved by grace through faith. But yet when it comes to this personal life, when it comes to this thing, Somehow we can't get over what we can see. Somehow we can't get over, I wake up every morning and I'm walking this thing out. So that is the reality. Guys, God is, he's not screaming. He's whispering at the top of his lungs. <laughs> he's whispering at the top of his lungs. You're free. You're free. I need you to believe that you're free. You're free. You're free. Hmm. What, what controls our actions? Our thoughts, our mind. Would, is there anybody who disagrees with that? What controls our actions is our, is our mind. If I decide I'm going to go from here to there, what's going to control that? Well, my brain is going to work. My brain's going to tell these muscles, hey, fire, and I'm going to get from here. If I decide to clap and put my hands together, what is going to tell my hands to do that? My brain is going to tell my hands to do that. Everything is going to start from here. My emotions in my life, whether we like to believe that one or not, what's going to control my emotions in my life? This right here, my thought process. If I wake up tomorrow morning and for no reason I decide to think about the most depressing things all day long, my emotions are going to be depressing and I'm going to feel depression. Why? Because where my brain goes, that's where my body and my emotions and everything else is going to go. We understand that, guys. Why can't we understand that when it comes to biblical freedom and how we live our life? We know that this thing is where it starts. This thing is going to control the actions. This thing is going to control the motion. Yet we got strongholds. We got thoughts. We got these things. And we attack the actions. We say, I got to get these thoughts out. I mean, I got, I got to get this strong. And I got to get, if I could just stop doing that. If I could just put the, put, you, guys, this, this applies to addiction. This applies to everything. Everything. As a man thinks in his heart. So is he. That's the life that he is going to live out. Just recently, I'm talking about within the past month, this very thought process right here has set me free from a stronghold of, I don't even know what to call it. I, I called it a guilt stronghold, a stronghold of guilt. And let me, let me share this with you too because I, I, I feel it on my heart that I want to share this as well. A, a little lie crept in my life a few weeks ago, and it started out as a small lie. Oh, we got to look out for the small lies. A small lie creeped in my life, and it was a simple thought, and it was, God's not proud of you. Like, God's not okay with you. He's not proud of you. And I thought, okay, 
And immediately, I got introspective. Immediately, the, the focus shifted from who he is and how good he is and what the word says about me. Immediately, there was a mirror on me, and I started looking at myself. And I started looking at my actions throughout the day and being like, well, what am I doing to make God proud? God's not proud of me. Like, why isn't God proud of me? I started looking at how much was I praying? How much was I reading my Bible? Was, am I treating my wife right? Am I being a good father? And I started looking at all these things. And this thing started growing in my heart. And I thought, man, and because I felt, guys, I felt, it felt very real. God's not proud of me. And it started to morph its way into you have to work for God's love and God doesn't love you. This is recent, guys. I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be transparent and real. Not, I'm a super Christian. I never deal with anything. These are, these are real things that I've been dealing with. And it morphed into God doesn't love you. And, and then I'm like overdrive, guys. Like, read my Bible. Read my Bible. Shauna, you read your Bible. Read your Bible for me. Double read your Bible for the times I'm not reading my Bible. If you're praying for an hour, double it, triple it. Like, you, like, why isn't God happy with me? And I kept trying to figure it out. And I don't, guys, I don't walk. I'm not a perfect guy, but I don't walk, I don't walk a line. I walk way far away from the line if I, if I can. I'm not, I'm not being arrogant or saying, I'm saying there's no reason for this junk to be in my life. I, I don't walk around cursing people out. I don't walk around listening to stuff and watching and doing all these things. Like, I'm walking way far away from the line, and I still don't understand. Why isn't God pleased with me, and why doesn't God love me? And then what was first my thoughts and my thinking over and over again, God doesn't, man, God doesn't love me. I started to speak out loud. I'm struggling. I'm struggling and, and I don't believe that God loves me. It started to come out of my mouth. And then that scripture that we've heard about, the power of life and death is in this tongue. Then I started sowing all these negative seeds into my soul. I started speaking to Shauna about it. I started speaking it out loud. I said, Shauna, I'm struggling to believe that God loves me. I'm struggling. I'm just struggling. I'm struggling. I talked to my mama about it. Mama, I'm struggling. Struggling to believe God loves me. Over and over again, I said it over and over again. I thought it. Stronghold, a lie, got in there. It got crept in, and it just, and it grabbed a hold just like this. And I had another come to Jesus moment. (laughs) I praise God for my come to Jesus moments. Hopefully, it doesn't take you all that long. But I had a come to Jesus moment again, and I said, God, I'm so tired. Like, I know that you love me. I'm so tired of feeling this way. I'm so tired of thinking this way. And God whispered to me. He said, I got to do it like this because the microphone's over there. He said, as a man thinks in his heart. And I go, oh, my gosh, guys. And the same truth bomb got dropped in my spirit all over again. What had I been thinking? I had been thinking I'm struggling to believe that God loves me. I'm struggling to believe that God loves me. My thinking led to my speech and my, and my, my voice and me giving life to this thing. I was telling people, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. What was my identity in my head? A guy who struggles. I look in the mirror. Am I a guy who knows how much God loves me? No, I'm a guy who struggles to believe that. What was I walking out in my life? A guy who struggles to believe that God loves him. Guys, what you think, where your mind is, is where your life is going to go. And I had that aha moment, and the light bulb clicked again, praise God. And I said, oh, my gosh, thank you, God, that you love me so much. I'm not struggling. I know how much you love me. I know how much you love me. That's not who I am. I'm not struggling. I'm not a guy who struggles. What we don't understand Don't go so hard. What we, some, what we sometimes miss and we don't understand is a, a, a little lie that creeps in is that this is just normal. It's normal. It's normal, God. Everybody struggles. Listen real close. I want everybody's attention. Y- yes, yes, there are struggles in life. Yes, everybody does struggle. We get hit with these things. But what we can't believe and what we can't, fall into the trap is normalizing the struggle, normalizing the struggle taking days and days and days, normalizing the voicing of the struggle. And we have to get to a point that no matter how I feel inside, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the circumstances say, I'm not going to think that, I'm not going to voice that because my Bible tells me completely, something completely different, something completely different. Here is, where am I at? This is something I wrote down. The devil does not need to bind you. All he needs to do is make you think that you are bound. And you will live your whole life as a free man or woman bound in chains. 
The devil doesn't need to bind you. As a matter of fact, the devil has zero power to bind you. Zero. Zero. But if he can get you to think that you're bound, you'll live your entire life bound even though you are 100% set free. Here's, here's the problem Here's the problem that I see with this, and this is the problem that, that I see sometimes, and I'm not going to blanket statement everything, but here's the problem I see sometimes in the body of Christ. I'm up here, and I'm telling you testimonies of breakthrough moments in my life. My problem is, how did it get that far? My problem is, how did I find myself not once, and granted, you know, I, I forget things. This was years ago. This was a few weeks ago. Granted, how did I get to a point to where I'm, Chris, don't leave. I'm preaching so good, man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't have said it. You know what I'm thankful of? There we go. We need a lighthearted moment. You know what I'm so thankful of? I'm so thankful Johnny doesn't do that to me because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he would not yet, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would not be able to get, he would not be able to get through one message without this. Alex, where are you going? I'm preaching so good. But, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about breakthrough in mindsets and breakthrough in strongholds in my life, and I'm wondering, how did I get to the point to where I need this massive breakthrough? How did I get to the point to where that little lie conceived into this bigger lie and bigger lie, and now, I mean, it's like, you know, and I'm trying to figure that out. And <laughs> how, how, how did I get this far? How did we get to the point to where we need to break off strongholds as opposed to the truth being so alive in our hearts that lies have no room to take root? How do we get to the point to where we need to break off strongholds as opposed to the truth being so alive in our hearts that lies have no room to take root? And I really, really sought God for this answer. I really sought God for a different answer, to be honest with you, because immediately I felt like I knew the answer. But I sought God and I said, okay, God, give me the answer. I need the answer. Like, what's the secret formula? You know, like, God, give me a secret formula that nobody else knows. So that way, you know, I'll have it. I'll have the secret. And God said, you believed the lie. You didn't know the truth. And I'm like, no, that's not the answer. God, give me, give me, a, give, give me a different answer. And I sought God. I'm like, God, I need a different answer than that because, like, but, but here's, I know it's funny, but I, I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. And there's a lot of freedom in this too. In the middle of a stronghold that says God doesn't love me, in the middle of, honestly, my emotion said this, I was wrapped up in this thing. Like I was really struggling really bad. Like knowing, but I, but I knew better. And so when God tells me you get to that point because you don't know the truth, I'm like, hold up, God. Like now I'm going to argue with God <laughs> again. That hasn't got me too far in my life. I don't learn <laughs> very quickly, apparently. But I'm like, hold on, that's really confusing to me. Because in the middle of knowing, I just know God doesn't love me. Like, I'm struggling. It's my feelings, my emotions. Everything says something different. I could quote you Romans 8. I could quote you Romans 8, the end of Romans 8. For what shall separate me from the love of God? Is it life? Is it death, principalities, angels, powers? Is it height? Is it depth? Nothing can separate me from the love of God. No, not one thing. Could quote it. I know it. How did I get to this point? Do I have your attention? Amen. All right. Let's go there. Has anybody had that, by the way? Has anybody, can anybody ever say, I know the Bible says this, but? Like anybody ever had that moment? I know. I know the word. I know the Bible says this, but <laughs> here's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of funny. Sometimes, I got to tell you, this is how I think. I don't, I don't believe that we should all head this direction, but I think that's pretty daggum arrogant, and that's pretty daggum proud for me to have that thought. God was showing me that. We had a lot of humility conversations, too. Like, after a lot of fathering, God said, you know, that's, that's pretty crazy that the almighty God would pin out this book for you and I would write out my promises. The creator of the universe would take his word and who he is and his life and put it in this Bible and give it to you freely with all the power, all the revelation, all the knowledge and all the love wrapped up into this thing. And I hand it to you and you say, yeah, I see that, but I don't believe it. I'm just saying. But what? <laughs> that went over super well. <laughs> 
But what is the disconnect? What is the disconnect between hearing the truth, knowing the truth, and seeing the truth in freedom in your life? What is the disconnect? Where is the disconnect between knowing a scripture, hearing a scripture? I'm, I, I could quote you the scripture, and that scripture being a truth and a powerful reality in my life. So I said, okay, God, well, let's go there. What's the answer? Because I, quote, unquote, I know this scripture. I know it in my head. I can quote it. So that means I know it, right? And I said, okay, God, I need the answer to this. And God gives me an answer that I was not expecting at all. And I felt like it's our motto. It's the theme for this church. God says, seed time and harvest. And I said, okay, help me out with that. Help me out with Seed, time, and harvest. God, like I know the principle of seed, time, and harvest, but help me out with what you're trying to get at because I don't understand. How does seed, time, and harvest the truth and the reality of the word? (laughs) And God says, how much of the word are you planting in your heart and seeing the fruit of versus how much of negative things and lies are you planting in your heart and seeing the fruit of? See, here's the deal. There's a lot of things in this life a lie, but fruit don't lie. I can guarantee you, I can promise you, Pastor Johnny has said this 50 trillion times in the past few weeks. You ain't going to walk up to a tree that's got apple on it and say, that ain't an apple tree. It ain't going to happen. If you see the fruit of something showing in your life, it got planted there. You may not have wanted it to be planted there. You may not have meant for it to happen. It's okay. I was a young kid. I got a lot of stuff planted in there out of ignorance, not knowing that the enemy is super deceitful and ignorance, and I planted all this stuff in my life. God's faithful, guys. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. If you're seeing the fruit of some, Shauna, don't leave. I'm preaching so good. (laughs) If you're seeing, I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. I love you, sugar. If you are seeing the fruit of something in your life, guys, it's because something got planted there. It's because you have been planting that there. You have allowed it to be planted there, and you're seeing the fruit of that in your life. So when I say, God, I know the word, God said, yeah, absolutely, you can quote a Bible verse, but there's a big difference between being able to quote the word and hiding the word into your heart and planting it. See, what happens is we as Christians sometimes, we're phenomenal seed acquirers, but we're not as good seed planters. We're phenomenal seed acquirers. Every Sunday, Pastor Johnny stands up here and does a phenomenal job at sowing seeds everywhere. All different kinds of seeds of revelation, seeds of life, seeds of positivity, seeds of the word, everything. And he sows all these seeds. And it's easy. It's no problem for us to say, oh, yeah, sweet seeds. And we get it. And we acquire all these seeds. And we're great at that. But we have not been very good at sowing these seeds down in our heart. Here's the, here's the part that is kind of an ouch, like ouch. It's because acquiring seeds is easy. It takes a lot of effort to sow. I could go to the store right now, and I could acquire a bunch of seeds. That's easy. <laughs> That's super easy. Acquiring seeds, easy. Pocket, paid, done. <laughs> Getting in the yard when it's hot, tilling the ground, turning the soil over, plant. I don't even know how to plant. Am I doing good? Is this sound about right? <laughs> All I know is I've seen people do it, and it's hard. They're sweating. I don't want to sweat. (laughs) I got to make you laugh a little bit because the Holy Spirit's stabbing you, and he's cutting you up, and he's cutting you deep. And I'm like, make him laugh. God, do something because this. (laughs) Mm. So we've been been phenomenal at acquiring all these seeds, but yet the thing that's been missing in our life is we haven't been so good at planting these seeds down in our heart. And guys, I got to be honest with you, it's been said a million times, and I, and I don't, it, it's, it's something that, let me, I'll tell you what, let me do it like this, and let me say it like this. Apparently, it hasn't been said enough, or apparently, I haven't been listening strong enough, because I still got strongholds that are popping up, so when, <laughs> in my life, so when I say, Guys, we have to be way more diligent about not just coming to church on Sunday and coming to church on Wednesday and saying, that's enough, and I got enough word, and living the whole rest of our life with a world that is full of not good seeds that get planted in our ears, and they get and we listen to it all around us, and then some crazy thing starts springing forth life down in our heart, and we wonder, and that's, I can say that because I'm very much so guilty of that recently. Believe in a lie. 
Because the things, because I did not have, I did not have the word of God planted deep enough in my heart When you plant something, I know enough to say this. When you plant something, you plant it in there. If there's no adversity, if there's no high winds, if there's no flooding or anything like that, when you plant something, after a few days, it'll start growing roots, and the roots will start to deepen. If within a few days you walk over to that plant and you pluck it up, it's very much so easy to pluck it up. Why? Because the roots have not been seeded very well. The roots are not deepening. The roots are not growing. If you have truth in your heart and it is not so deep that it could be plucked up that easy, or if other things are planted around it, it drowns it out and steals all the life from it, then guys, we need to work on deepening our roots of the word down in our heart. Oh, I know y'all just are loving this. Y'all want to hear this so much? It's our responsibility as Christians, guys. The Father is so good, and he sent his Son, and he's so amazing, and he provided this thing called life. It's called Zoe life for us. And he said there's only one thing. There's only one condition. The only condition is you have to believe. You have to believe. But with believing, guys, with believing, that if you just believe, that's enough, that's fine. But you can't expect to just say, well, I believe and walk away and not get tossed to and fro and not get thrown about. Is that enough to get you to heaven just to believe? Yeah, absolutely. But do you want to live life to where you're not conquering and subduing until you get there? We have a responsibility on our part to know the truth. We have a responsibility to take the truth and the knowledge of the word of God and to plant it deep in our hearts so that no wind or wave, no adversity, no lie can chop this thing down. This thing ain't getting pulled out of my heart, guys. I got it. What I didn't tell you was from the moment, from the moment that I seen some freedom and I said, oh, my gosh, I am not a guy who struggles to believe God loves me. God loves me. From that moment. Which, by the way, guys, I didn't feel any different. See, this is a tough point, too. I didn't feel any different. The presence of God didn't come and hover over me and, oh, my God, he loves me. I just know it. I didn't feel any different. You have to know. Ooh. You have to know better enough that you cannot walk by your feelings, guys. Your feelings are going to lie to you like that. This thing takes some consistency. This thing takes being willing to put faith with the word. This thing, it, it, takes, it takes wanting it so bad that you're being willing to say, I don't care how it feels. I don't care how it seems. I don't care if ever again I have an emotion of the fact that God loves me. It says it in that book, and that's all I need to know. That's it. I'm done. I've settled it in my heart. And this is what it also takes. It also takes getting that thing in your mouth. And this is, this is where, this is what I didn't say. This is what I didn't mention a minute ago. From that moment on, every day, guys, I have been getting in my mouth. Every day I've been saying, thank you, God, that you love me so much. Thank you, God, for Romans 8. And I've been quoting Romans 8. I went and found some more scriptures, Romans 5, 17, that says that I'm a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have been made new. I'm shiny new. He loves me, guys. Then you flip on down a little bit to Romans 5.21 that says that he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that I might be the righteousness of God. I'm in right standing. How could you not love me? I'm your favorite. And I started getting all these things and planting all these things and deepening my roots in these things. And guess what? I still hear lies. But guess what? They don't land anywhere. They don't get planted. They can't chop my tree down no more because I'm starting to get some fruits and I'm starting to get some deep root. Amen? Amen. So this is what I want to do. I'm going to Have I been going? What time is it? I don't, I don't even know. Okay, whatever. So this is what I want to do. I want to go over a quick crash course in how do we plant the word of God in our heart? How do we deepen our roots? Let's go through a crash course. Hold on. I need this right here. Y'all want to play a game? Let's play a game. <clears throat> Let's see where we at. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time. Okay, if 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 
if you know these lyrics, I want you to, I want you to sing along. I want you to sing, okay? Everybody understand. I'm expecting you to say, you ain't got to sing. I'm expecting you to say lyrics to the song if you know the song. Is that easy enough? Can we play that game? Okay, so we're going to say some lyrics if we know the lyrics. Okay, so if I stand up here and I say, oh, we're halfway there. Oh, you guys did way better than I thought you were going to do. That's so good. You want to do another one? Let's do another one. Okay, how about this one? But you want to be bad, so beat it, beat it. No one wants to be defeated. Yeah, okay, sweet. All right, you're getting it. Okay, uh, how about this one? We'll do one more. We'll do one more. Ain't this fun? Ain't church fun? Okay, so let's say I do this one. I'm just a small town girl living in a... I thought you guys were Christians. How do y'all know? <laughs> How y'all know all these heathenistic songs? They played this on soft rock. That's the devil. <laughs> Here's the funniest thing ever. I had to go back to the 80s, and I siri it. I said, Siri, give me the top 10 most popular songs of the 80s. And I said, okay, sweet. And I picked out a few. <laughs> siri, give me, because I didn't want to just do the 80s. Siri, give me the most popular song from the 90s. And I thought, I ain't singing that in church. I ain't singing that in church. <laughs> I didn't even bother going to the 2000s because progressively music just got terrible. I'm like, how did I used to listen to that? Okay, I had a point to make, though. Whether you have heard that song in years, whether you've even thought about that song in years, immediately I say, oh, we're halfway there. And y'all say, oh, we're living on a prayer. You knew the lyrics. How would you know those lyrics? They were buried somewhere deep in there. You didn't even know that you knew them lyrics. You weren't even thinking about them lyrics and them lyrics were in there. I said, beat it. And y'all said, nobody wants to be defeated. You got it. Why? Because you've seen those lyrics. You have read those lyrics. You have sang those lyrics time and time and time after time to where it doesn't matter the occasion if somebody <laughs> If somebody says a small town girl, y'all say she's living in a lonely world. You know, because it's buried down deep in your heart. You have them, and I venture to say they're probably never going to go away. They're always going to be there. You'll, they'll never not be there. It's like, how could you forget that? Guys, this does not have to be difficult. This does not have to be something that's super intricate. God didn't require it to be that way. God didn't design it to be that way. The same way that those lyrics get stuck in your heart and you just know them for forever, you'll never forget them, is the same way the word should be in our hearts. And it's the same thing, guys. The... The only difference is it's fun to say, living on a prayer and to sing them songs. And that's fun. It's, she's living in a lonely world, y'all. I can't get over that. It's fun. It's a good time to sing songs. It's not always fleshly fun to lock yourself away in your bedroom with your word all by yourself and say, God, I thank you for Romans 8. I thank you that you said nothing can separate me from the love of God. I thank you, God, for John 3, 16. It hasn't been said enough for you so loved the world. Even while they were sinners, even when you didn't love just the Christians, you loved the world, you loved everybody around me. That's not as fun to us. It should be. But that's not as fun. So we fail to do the not fun parts because of the flesh. Let me set you free a little bit in this area, too. Just because your flesh is saying, that's not fun, I don't want to do that, guys, guess what? That's not your identity either. You can say, yes, I do, and walk in there. You would be amazed how much, if you tell your flesh to shut up and you're going to do it anyway, you'd be amazed how quick your flesh will get in line. And you walk into your closet, I don't want to be here, shut your mouth. Yes, you do. You're going in your closet whether you like it or not. And you sit down with your word and you look and it's 30 minutes later and you're in the presence of God going, oh my gosh, I got to go to work. Because where this thing goes, this body is going to follow. Where this thing goes, your life is going to follow. I don't think I got to any of my scriptures. Let me, let me, okay, real quick, real quick. Psalms 119. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. 
your word have I hid in my heart. Joshua 1 and 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I'll meditate on it day and night. Then, then, then I will make my way prosperous and I will have good success. Guys, there's keys all throughout. He's, he's saying it like the, as clear as he can. John 8, 31 and 32, if you abide in my word, then you're my disciple. If you're a disciple of God, you should be abiding in the word. How do you know? If you see somebody and you say, that's a disciple, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know it's a disciple? Because that's somebody who obviously, they've been in their word. That's got to be a disciple. They've been in their, ouch, ooh, okay, move on. Next one, next one, next one. You shall be my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. My word is a lamp unto a feet and a light in my path. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Guys, there's scripture after scripture after scripture that says, this is, this is what you have to do. You have to renew this mind. You have to get this mind there. And I promise you will be free. I promise you will walk out what this thing believes.